Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and today we're going to talk a little bit about a new-ish feature with moving heads in X-Lights. And so one of the fun things with X-Lights, uh, one of the cool things, is as moving lights become more and more popular, they uh, are getting more and more inclusion in X-Lights and more and more optimization to make them easier to program. Like, I come from the stage lighting world. Our stage lighting consoles work very different from X-Lights, and there's a lot of things that the consoles do that make it easy to program moving heads. Some of those things uh, can work their way into X-Lights, and, and they have, and they will continue. Others of those things don't really work well with the way X-Lights functions. But I wanted to show you something cool that I finally demystified. I apologize. I keep burping up my lunch. Now I have hiccups. Yes. Um, but that I demystified that I want to show you thanks to Scott Hansen. Um, so, so many, there's so many guys that work in here. And I noticed a while ago that when you click on your moving heads, uh, if it's the moving head 3D model here in the layout tab, you see these presets here. And it's, it's had this number of presets. It's at the um, model level. So if you're using a custom model and you copy it or you grab it from somewhere else, you can set this number of presets in here. And then you have the ability for each of these presets, however many you set, to set a DMX channel, to set a value, to set a description. And so this is one of those things that I've looked at, I think it showed up late last year, and I played around with it, I've been like, how does this work? And just wasn't sure the best way to, to figure it out because I was like, well, maybe it's just not complete yet. Maybe it's not something that's, that's usable, it's just something they're building in there for future use, right? But then, the other day, Scott Hansen, uh, one of the developers, reached out to me, and I've, I've talked, I think, to most of the developers at this point, either in person or online, and he was asking me a question about, about um, something he wants to uh, pro possibly add to the moving head functionality, kind of like, okay, as a guy who's a vendor for moving lights and has a lot of experience with them, you know, how would I see this? And, and so I gave him some input there. But then I was like, hey, while you're here, um, what is this preset thing and how does it work? Because I expected it to be like, say I go into a sequence here, okay, and I grab a moving head. I'm just going to go to my first one here. And I'll zoom in on it too so it's way easier for you to see. But I don't have a scroll wheel so it doesn't always zoom well in X-Lights. Um, and I've, I've got a moving head. And I go here right and I pull up my DMX effect. And then maybe there's some way in here that I could activate this preset that I've set. Where for this first fixture here, um, I have set the DMX channel to be, um, I have set the pan and tilt basically to have some values to it so that the light kind of points forward and, and at the audience, right? Um, where you'd, you'd often put it. And so I'm like, okay, how do I find that? You know, is it somewhere in the DMX effect? Um, you know, I thought maybe it was, you could find it in the States because you can save States. And I've talked about that, um, where you can save DMX effect settings as States and recall those. And that can be helpful in programming. You can also do the same with effects presets um, where you can set them. Here are some PPD ones, but, but you can make moving head effects presets. Uh, but ultimately, that's not what this does. <laughs> and that's why I couldn't figure it out. So what does it do and how can you use it to make your display better? Well, this is both for the self-sequencer and for anybody sequencing professionally. Um, because essentially what this allows you to do is, as Scott put it, use non-DMX type effects with your moving heads without having to worry about setting like a position for them. So in this example, right, I set a position for the lights with, or for the first light, with the presets here in the layout tab. Now the cool thing about this is I could set this, but then I could pass my sequence to somebody else, and if they have a different moving head, they can adjust the values for their moving head. And I know there's some functionality with the, the channel remapping too, that you can do that, but this is a little bit different because um, it kind of sets almost like a default position for the light if it's running in effect, but it's not the DMX effect. So say I go, for example, and just use the on effect just for sim simplicity's sake. I now see, like if I copy it, onto my different lights here and stick myself somewhere on the timeline, that this first light 
moves, and I didn't set like a great location for it. I would typically set it more forward, right? But it moves to the place where it's pointing where I put it in that preset, and then it turns on. So the beautiful thing about this is now if I went ahead and say had a group that had my moving heads in it as well as other things and an effect was running on the house, I could make it so that they point forward and they're part of the whole effect, um, but I don't have to worry about setting up a position for the moving head and then having the DMX effect overriding the regular effect if it was lower uh, here in, in the, the layout of the, the sequence, etc. And so I think where this really gets cool is if you do things like he mentioned the single strand, which is a great option here. So if I put that on all my moving lights, right? And let's just do maybe black and white. Try and get something to show up. Um, I think the bars could be a good one for this where, yeah, we're running the bars. It's picked up my color there on the last fixture. Um, And now it moves them. Anywho, um, it's one of those things that we're still learning about, but definitely worth experimenting with if you use moving heads in X lights, having the ability to have some simple presets so that, again, if you you know do it the right way um, and have an effect on a light, seems like if it's just on a single fixture, but I, I think I may need to just rework um, maybe the render style. Um, and uh, you can have an effect run across these fixtures have them respond, but also have them pointing in a sensible direction without having to add a DMX effect. So thanks to Scott, thanks to all the X-Lights developers. If you're new here, head over to learnchristmaslighting.com. I've got a free guide I want to put into your hands. The four things, four that many, that I really wish I knew before I began with Christmas lighting. And we'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks.